what it is that we are or we've been. So I keep telling myself that no matter what it is that I know or what it is that I've experienced about spirituality, there's still another level. And it doesn't matter how much of a deep walk or a deep understanding I have had. My challenge to myself every day is to know that there's so much more to spirituality or to God or to the source or to this divine entity or to this divine intelligence or to this um creator of the universe there's much more than i've ever that i've ever than i've ever experienced or that i will ever experience and so the the humility first of all to just know that there is more and the and the vulnerability to let go of that which we know because the problem i have realized with many of us is that we get to be so full so so full as 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 individuals in the spirit where we do not thirst we do not hunger we do not desire we do not seek for more and that is where the problem starts because when we get so full of what we knew yesterday if we get so full of what we know today or even if we get if we get so full of what we know we knew in the morning even an hour ago even 30 minutes ago the thing is that we exempt ourselves or we disqualify ourselves from the next level of growth or from the next level of consciousness or from the next level of insight revelation or insight and revelation or understanding so i would just challenge us even in this journey and i like what it is that we are learning that within us the spirit of truth abides and if the spirit of truth is within us then the spirit of truth will bear witness within us within our inner man will bear witness for, for what works and what doesn't work even sometimes what might not necessarily work it just means that at the level that we are in we've not been able to get to our level of having a higher understanding or a higher revelation of that particular thing but the humility to be able to say that okay i'm not understanding this what i do is that i actually pack i i like compartmentalize it in my in my brain and i said okay this i'm not understanding so i'm not i'm i'm not going to delve much into it i'll pack it because probably the learning is not for now the learning is probably for a for a different time and a different season and what i have learned is that truth will always bear witness of itself so a time will come that when you go to the parts that you've gone through, when you are more, it's like the way you keep on peeling something back or you keep on uh, opening yourself up to levels of learning. So the more you open yourself up, the more learning comes and the more truth comes and the higher levels of consciousness you release, you, I mean, you, you, you achieve within yourself or you get into. Then I realized that much, much more weightier stuff comes my way. So what I have learned in this journey is just one, hunger, two, thirst, two, I mean three, discontent, discontent that you haven't arrived yet. Oh my, um, oh my God. In fact, come to think of it, you'll never really alive, uh, arrive. Why? Because there's so much more out there than what we will ever know. So the only way to the challenge is, the challenge is to yourself, to myself, not to anybody else, not for anything else, not for anyone else, but for yourself, for you to challenge yourself to grow, for you to challenge yourself to desire, to know that, to know that there is more, to want to go higher, to want to go deeper, to want to go further, to want to go into levels of consciousness and levels of insight and just knowing more about who you are, about what is out there, about this entity, no matter what it is that we call it, whether we call it Ngai, Mungu, God, you know, Nyasai, Katonda, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you understand that there's a divine source or there's a divine entity that is there that will keep on revealing itself to us, will keep on manifesting and just enlightening us more and more and more for as long as we are seeking and we are hungry for the same. So me, that's that is one of my um, most encouraging uh, parts when it comes to this. Book. You know, that's the that that's one of my biggest and most uh, motivating aspects of learning 
you know, that I, I will forget what was there. I'll count it as loss. I'll count it as nothing. Yeah, it's a building block, but really, I count it as nothing. I, I count it as nothing, as nothing. And what I do is that I just say there's more. So whatever and however the more will come, it can be a clip, it can be a talking with someone, and then when you talk to them, you realize that your mind, it's like your inner being just opens up into this thing, and then it keeps, you keep on going and unfolding. You know, truth unfolds itself. It's like a dominoes effect. The minute you go to this path, when you get that, and then the next level opens for you, and then when you get there, the next level opens for you. But it can't open up unless you're on the journey. Believing and trusting that the spirit of truth within you and your inner being that is um, connected to divine intelligence and with as you follow the path of peace, that it will bear witness within you. Truth always bears witness of itself. And that's when you know that you're on the right path. So yeah, I'm excited to be here. I'm looking forward to learning and I wish us all the best as we continue in all always as we pursue the path that we are on Santi. uh sheila just a question eh? first of all it's not related to anything you say did you go to aga khan high school by any chance no i did not did you school in mombasa by any chance yes i did ah uh, okay sawa it will look like a schoolmate of Aga Khan somewhere. Uh, maybe Aga someone Mombasa. in Aga Khan stole my, stole my look. They need to return my look to me. <laughs> you are, maybe you are photocopied. Maybe you are you photocopied. Know, I must you have been. This, I mean, yeah, yeah that's somebody. Very funny enough, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Maliza Kwanza. I said the the beauty about life is that uh, I keep on telling I keep on telling people I'm an original. So whoever looks like me, ah, you end up, you end up in copy. I get you. I get you. <laughs> whoever looks like you is a copy of the original, but not the original. But not the original. Yeah, yes. I am Sheila Toya. You know, I am Sheila Toya. I'm your catalyst. There's no other transformation I catalyst am. than Sorry. myself. But it's nice yeah, meeting you. You know, can it's I, nice. Can I, can I can I challenge your point of view, Kidogo too? Can Kidogo you point, challenge it much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ah, Kidogo too. And now, can you start seeing yourself as uh, as one piece, then uh, another person as another piece, then uh, the plants on the ground as another piece of you. So everything else is a piece of you. It is, but I'm saying, saying the piece the that I am. No, yeah, the piece the that I am. Yeah. Get, get me, get me when I say that. The okay, piece okay, that okay, I am. Yeah. I am who I am. I am what I am. I own myself. Mm -hmm. I teach people about being authentically them. That which is out there is out there as a function of what I am, but it is still in its entirety the wholeness and the fullness of what it is. But me as Sheila Toya, I am who I am. I am that which I am. And I am in my essence and in the fullness of who I am. I'm not saying that yeah. um, nobody else can. I'm just in my space right now. I am yeah. in the existence of what I am. And that is what mm -hmm. I, am, I am confessing. Yeah. And that is what... I am dispensing. Sindio, I know that all of us are a facet of everybody else, but left is a fullness of left and right is a fullness of right and left, right comes together and it becomes, you know, the fullness of what an entity is. But yeah. what you are is what you are, Timothy, you know, and unless we understand that and we embrace that as individuals, we miss out because then you want to look outside for that which you feel or you know is missing and you miss out on being that which you are in the fullness of that which you are so the essence of living life is first of all you as timothy to get so embraced we are all a we are a puzzle and every other time in this journey as we are saying we are created in the image and in the likeness of what the divine source energy is all about and we can never really 
uh, get to be the ultimate but at any one time as you are evolving in transforming into your your ideal self and your authentic and your true self because every season and in any stage who you are and what you are becomes manifested but if, when you are like if you're in class one be the best that you can be in class one when you're in class three be the best that you can be in class three whichever stage it is that you are evolving through own who you are understand who you are own who you are manifest who you are because you'll only be that which you are at that stage at any one particular time as you are evolving into your higher self you know what i mean so that's what that's what i am saying i know that in this world we are all one body we're all part of this one body we're all part of this one entity but be the most and be the best and be fully that which you are i'm turning 50 right and even as I'm turning 50, I have, I'll only be 50 at one point in my life. Now the path of growth when you're 50 or at the stage that you're 50, be all that you are at 50 and enjoy your life at 50 because I'll only be 50 at this point in time. Time will come when I'll be what? I'll be 60, right? Wait a but minute. I can never... You're saying you're 50? Yes. Ah, uh, Wena Salim, you're supposed to be in one of that group. <laughs> no, we are, we are we are we are already we are already in one wow 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 of life that we need to come back and really uh, be conscious of mindfulness when we talk about mindfulness when we talk about consciousness when we talk about authenticity when we talk about realness when we talk about beingness it's about you exuding that which you are and just releasing the essence of what you are and what you carry at any one point in this journey that is called life that you are in and when we are in that level of consciousness then we can be able to evolve faster and grow faster because then for example i can be a dysfunctional person at this stage in my life right and if i understand that in my dysfunctionality i, I get to perceive and understand that this is dysfunctional and yet there's a better level of living and yet there's a higher level that i am required to enter into unless i walk in my consciousness right now in my dysfunctionality as an individual then i miss out on the opportunity that presents itself to me by virtue of me knowing that there's another level of life or existence that is that i can get into so i i encourage people in at every, at any one time and at any one stage in life when you're in that path of life be who you are own who you are leave out what it is that you are but if you like what it is that you are know there's another level of liking you if you don't like that which you are just know there's another level of living where you can enter into and it's by the way it's very possible where you can like what it is that you you are because you evolve so it's not it's not to disdain anybody or it's not to belittle anybody it's just to be able to own the space that i am in mentally own the space that i am in um spiritually emotionally physically socially because by being in this existence i can only be able to add value to you as Timothy, I can be able to add value to Carol, to to uh, to who, to Mili, to Ellen, to Kamau, to uh, to Salim. When I come to this particular engagement, because it's it's a it's a divine exchange where you give me the the all the the, the essence and the fullness of who you are as Timothy. When we come together, you come in your fullness. 
And when I come to you, I come in my fullness. And then when we come together, then we are entities that are full. When we walk with that kind of consciousness, then you will realize that relationships will become more fulfilling. Um, marriages will become more fulfilling. Parenting will become more fulfilling. Friendships will become more fulfilling. Whatever uh, interactions that we have when it comes to relationship, they'll become more fulfilling because then we Father, walk in that conscious awareness. Yeah. Can I can I add a comment to your speech? The way to measure Facebook. You know, when uh, when you mentioned relationships, eh, I feel like I should say this eh, in my fullness. Eh? Uh, when when I realized uh, that my marriage wasn't working, eh, I, I there's something I said that has just come back right now. I told her, okay, sour, basi, okay, you've decided like that, sour. Me, I'll just go ahead and be the coolest ex-husband you've ever had. These kids will be having uh, the best, uh, like, uh, father away from home. Yeah, it is. It it is the moment I stopped suffering from uh, from that situation when I said, okay, fine. So uh, now I'm a divorcee. Ah, okay, so oh, then I can be a cool one. Eh? I can try be the best. How 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 are uh, how are uh, ex husbands like you know things like that? So I get you. I, I and it is so beautiful that you you put it that way. That uh, you are encouraging somebody to. To just uh, just be just be who the fuck you are <laughs> and you see the problem the problem is that uh, we go through social pressures because then everybody wants you to be what it is that is their expectation but what we forget yeah. is that you as timothy you're only responsible yeah. for yourself i cannot be responsible for you or how it is that you work or how it is that you act but you can only be responsible for yourself i've also gone exactly. through a divorce and when i was there i mean the drama that came with that relationship but many years later i mean when you're walking away and you make a conscious decision you see like now you are conscious that i'm gonna be the coolest you see so that already transitions your mind into another level of of existence that was not there before because subconsciously you've given a command to your brain your brain does not know that this is an imaginary thing for as long as you've said it and you're convicted and you are fully persuaded that that is the rest of you plays ball and that is exactly what i did and when i walked away i was like jack me this is not a marriage i want to stay in this is not the kind of relationship i want to have and many years later even as we made peace you know, he was like, can we get back together? Can we do, imagine many years later and many years prior to that, if you had ever told me that this guy would have come back to me and told me, Sheila, I want you back. If I hadn't done the work in myself, I would have probably said yes. But guess what? I was saying, you know, I think you're living a fallacy. I think you're living a mirage because the Sheila that you're looking for is dead. That Sheila doesn't exist. The Sheila that is there today is a totally different woman. And because she's a totally different woman, probably would still have challenges. And we had a beautiful relationship after that. Fast forward, when you now look many years later, when I got married, I have a beautiful relationship with my present hubby because then I exercise, and I tell people every time, even as we're talking, touching base on relationships, I tell people every time, the secret is in doing the work in you. Because unless you learn from your mistakes, unless you make some conscious decisions concerning what kind of a person you'd want to be, a spouse you'd be, or what kind of a marriage you'd want, unless you make a conscious decision to really take things in, in their stride and really to deal with yourself in those things, because you have to judge yourself. You have to put yourself on the weighing scale and tell yourself, and yeah, well, here I was a shitty chick. Here I was a shitty guy. Here I could have done better. Here I did well. Here you judge yourself. And when you judge yourself, you take stock of yourself before you come into another one another relationship, then when you're coming, you're coming in your fullness. And that is why that's the only way um, we can be able to change the rhetoric that if you've had a divorce first, you will have a divorce again. No, I tell people it's a lie. 
Many people that have done a work on themselves have very beautiful second marriages. Unless now you come again to this relationship with your dysfunctionality, yeah. Yeah? you're the same, same, same person who's coming with a chip on their shoulder, not understanding that, hey, it took two to tango. So this person had their own problems, but what about you? You had your own problem. Have you sorted yourself out? Or are you still mm -hmm. coming with a broken, you know, with a broken mentality, with a broken, with a broken wheel into this relationship, and you're expecting for there to be magic? It's a lie. Yeah. yeah. So those are just some of the things that we learned. Some of us learned the hard way. Nobody was there. You go back home when you have been KO'd out of life. You don't understand yeah. what was north, east, south, and west. But you begin to gather yourself where you've been spotted, and then yeah. you're like, okay. Let's go back on the road. Let's see how this thing is working. Where can we be able to salvage? What are we going to do about this? And then we we'll continue with life. But the essence of living is being seeking for your true self, finding your true self, accepting your true self, and most importantly, just living according to your own true self. That is what mm. makes the difference at the end of the day. No, thank, thank you so much. Thank you for for putting it that way in a in a way that now I can I can see better. I can I can meditate on more and benefit. Really, almost. I mean, ni kama yo samo ni likuat ni litafuta na imekuja. So it's beautiful to hear it from you. I think the essence is what what we seek is actually seeking for us. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. The truth is always out there. So yeah. that I would come at that point in time, and that is what I'm saying is because you draw it out of it or you do it out of me, right? Mm. So then, the beauty of transformation is that yeah. I'm not I'm not sitting on the outside pointing at you. I'm actually mm. there with you because you're a part of me. And even as I speak life into you, it's because I have life in me. And as I speak life into you, then the life in you becomes more and more uh, richer, more and more fulfilled, because I am not giving it to you out of malice or, you know, yeah. with anything connected to it, but only out of pure love and out of pure light, yeah. because that yeah. is what is the essence of life. And I think if we only would understand how it is that we can be able to speak. Somebody was asking me, how is it that you are able to, um, <laughs> and, and to, uh, to, uh, to, to like open people up so easily? I said, because yeah. I go to put myself at their space. I put myself at the level. I'm not at a high place looking <laughs> down at yeah, you. Yeah. I'll get yeah. into the rubble with you. I will embrace you in the rubble. I will show you I'm part of the rubble because that is what life is. That, that is what um, the essence of love is. That is what the essence of truth is. Truth, unless it knows how to disseminate itself at the level that it is in, you know? Yeah. Truth can be as simple. I tell people, speak to me as a child. Don't speak to me as an adult. Speak to me as a child. Because if you speak to me as a child, you would speak to a child in loving manner. You would speak to a child gently. You'd speak to a child graciously. You'd uh, speak to a child like in the simplest of simplest of languages. But you see, the problem is that I think when we grow older, we forget that in each and every one of us, there's a child. And so if we can only find that child, if we can only within us, if we can, and in each other, if we can only find these children, and some of these children have been lost or, or left in spaces and places, places of abuse, uh, places of neglect, uh, places of, of uh, hate, places of, um, what is it called, discrimination. So in each and every one of us is a child. And if we'd only learn to nurture the child in us ourselves, then we can be able to nurture the child in everybody else. And then when nature, all each and every one of us, life becomes so beautiful. When you sit with children 
they teach us how to live. A child comes together, then they don't know about black, white, yellow classes. They don't know those things. Then they just come together. They roll when it comes to uh, new things. They are, they are inquisitive. They want to go all out. They want to find out. They want to engage with strangers. But what something happened is that we lost that. And yet we are supposed to live through life as children. If only we would discover that, you know, discover that without having to bring all these extra, extra things that we come with. If only we would now walk down that path. And when that door opens, let's just walk through it. And I'll be, not be scared because sometimes we get scared that we might get hurt. And of course, to listen to our inner being, to listen because our emotions are our guidance system listen to our emotions if your emotions are like no 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 don't go there because of course that just shows you there's trouble there waiting to happen but if there is ease there is just you know we were being told you know we were being told go with the flow go with the flow that is something that many people many of us um resist and so we find that we we are not aligned we are not aligned mentally we are not aligned spiritually we are not aligned physically we're not aligned socially because we resist we resist parts that we don't know yet the flow is there it's easy for us to come together and just dive into this river the river of wanting to know more the river of enlightenment the river of truth. And then because when you jump in and when you're going with the tide and you're flowing, you're not going against the tide, it's easy. Things are easy for you. You enjoy it. You get refreshed. You get rejuvenated. But where every time we bring logic into it, every time we want to bring reason into it, what happens? We go into resistance mode. And then when we go into resistance mode, we realize that things now, now become, eh, 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 you know, just these things that now, uh, hinder hinder us and really really keep us off we build these barriers gates you know all these walls that we are building 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 why because we've refused to go with the flow so i'll just encourage us even as we are seeking to just be as little children and what i've learned is just to go back and say you know what you're the truth you're the light lead me in parts of truth lead me in parts of Lights lead me in parts of life, and even when I lack sorry, the ability, sorry, I got a call. I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> even when um, I lack yeah. the ability to to connect with what it is that is being said, I keep on telling Salim. I say, ah, 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 this is now too much. I need to get off. You know, and I get off. I get off in terms of having to feel like I have to take it all in. I can't. Sometimes you you. Your inner being will go bonkers, you know. Sometimes it just becomes like an overload of all these things. But as a child, you can go back and you start eating it kidogo by kidogo by kidogo. And then the unraveling happens and we grow in grace and grace and strength and strength and become better as individuals. So, yeah. By Let's way, keep learning. Yeah. That part of uh, being overwhelmed eh, is, is, a, is a real one. And you, if you just tune back to heaven, as in just tune back to that uh, nature of being a child, uh, not wanting to really control and uh, seeing the silly things, the synchronicities. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, like in my mind right now, if you would enter my mind, eh, for some reason, I I cannot stop uh, I cannot stop uh, uh, looking at your profile picture and thinking you you are fifty like okay and then how come you look like my my schoolmate you know like trying to to see where these uh, uh, breadcrumbs are or the synchronicities you know so and sometimes you may you may want to go deep like uh, dig but let me tell you what I what I I've come to appreciate and and now find total peace and or rather never have need to worry about anything and just be is that they you are never given calculus to solve. Yeah. You will never find another maths paper in your life. Yeah. You'll never find another uh uh like 
really, really difficult uh, thing to solve. So when you're in this uh, dimension of, of heaven, is that it's totally new. It's, uh, uh, that, that's why I keep telling Sal Salim, sometimes these experiences, at a particular point, uh, you will not have enough English words to say. You will find yourself just repeating the same thing, but in your experience, it's this. Yes, you are repeating the same thing, but with more any the stories you can give to prove that that small statement, something like God is love. Eh? The least you can use to confirm that God is love keeps growing. You know, it never stops being true that God is love. Whether you will find it in a in a scenario like mtu akuja tu akupatie such a healing word eh? and it's what you've been needing for your whole life and uh, that you know that kind of knowing that hey you 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 you, you have uh, things that other people can see and they, and they can help you so like the advice you, you've just given eh? it has repeated 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 it's a synchronicity in so many ways so the the kingdom uh, it's just opening the eyes and or rather just being just be be you are not even supposed that you to change anything about yourself and as you said your authentic self it is just uh, yeah as in that's it there is as in everything else is happening from this point from this moment and uh, like i have my phone screensaver are uh, some words. Eh? Um, I've written, uh, today is the best day ever. This moment is true. And uh, uh, sometimes when I see good things and I see that, that uh, message I've left on my phone to always display before I pick it, is that it is true. Like, in the infiniteness of our journey uh, now that we are here it is not hard to believe that here on is just uh, another revelation another synchronicity another miracle another friend you meet who just tenxes your life eh? like really transforms you business consultant wellness enthusiast author transformational coach that word transformation or that word you gave that was transformational it has landed like in the right years so and you know i wanted to ask uh, now how, how 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 much are you charged how how how, how would you have uh, charged that session because i know you give the uh, nini villa uh, botox yeah, that's so, like advice I, worth something, right? In your industry. Yeah, so, and you've given it. So, <laughs> so I do consultancies. Um, ideally, for you to be able to journey, because it's not just about making money. And then, of course, I do. So I do a consultancy. I'll charge you an hour is um, 3000 and then after that, okay. we will yeah. go into packages. So I have different packages. Um, yeah. Awake, Ignite, Transform. Because then you realize that people are at different levels. But I have realized that mm. one thing that is like, uh, it's like a heartbeat all through people is the, is the mark that many of us don't know who we are. Many of us lose track of who we are. Many of us morph, we lose ourselves to be able to adapt an entity of existence that is contrary to who we are. You know, it can be as a function of um, the demands of society. Um, of course, now our relationships that we are in or the places that we were brought in, things can yeah. just be what it is. But I, I always tell people that the best thing you can ever do for yourself is to, to walk true to yourself. But you can't walk true to yourself if you do not know who you are. So encouraging people, just providing a safe space for people to come in where they can they can they can be themselves. And even being yourself in what is perceived as um incorrect, you know, 
because many mm. people we get labeled all the things that we get labeled but the most important thing is to give somebody a safe uh, self-sharing space that's what i do i give you a safe self-sharing space where you can come share unrestricted unjudged uncondemned no prejudices no no pressures you know yeah. just you come you come in and then as you come in as you begin mm -hmm. to what i call unraveling we unravel mm -hmm. and then as we unravel we peel back we peel back everything that that you are at present and then we begin now to bring to fore all that you can be yeah? yeah as we let go of all that you shouldn't be as we celebrate in the fact that you've been where you've been um and it's good all these things as we keep on saying that um everything works for our ultimate good you see that is something that we don't really appreciate i, I if only i we would uh, get to that level of understanding that many of the things that we go through as much as we go through them it's not just for us i mean if you had ever told me many years ago caro is my sister caro is my elder sister but if there's ever any time you would have ever told me those many years ago that i would ever be at a place where i would be celebrating that i would be looking back at my divorce and saying anything mm -hmm. positive about that i would have told you that was crazy that was crazy in terms of you know the pain the heartache the misconceptions the prejudices um the scourge that society will put upon you but imagine being in a space like where we are now and being with people that would help you and you what it is that you've said timothy if people would be able to help you as timothy to have embraced who you are then and to have embraced that situation and really navigated it from a totally different standpoint, then probably that situation would have been easier, lighter, faster for you. Because I believe so strongly that the, the things about life is that everything comes to you to work for your ultimate good, but to also equip you for the, the journey ahead, not necessarily for yourself only, but also to other people that will be drawn to you. Because then there's that tribe that is of you that is existing out there that will tune into your vibe that will tune into your conversation you know to your frequency yeah. there are people that um kamau for example i i the first time i met kamau the thing that drew me to kamau is the love is just the purity of who he is the thing that yeah. drew me to yeah. to yeah to salim is just how real this guy can be you know this guy is real he's just himself you know and he will the thing that will will drew me to carol as much as she was my sister she's my sister is that if there's anything that carol will do carol will always balance you out you know carol will never yeah. never ever you know she'll not be at this side really she'll always be like you know that diplomat really just helping you to um sanitize your head so at any one time when you go to her caro will balance you out that is something that yeah. always appeals to me and uh, when it comes to her as my sister and so the now when we are even talking about now the thing of imagine you understanding what your strength is and when when you understand what your strength is you um harnessing that and you are walking in insight of just the treasure that you are carrying and really appreciating it because to other people that do not understand the process you can it can be misconstrued, misconstrued. I I have learned that um, sometimes it's good to be different because if you look at yourself, if I look at myself, if Sanling looks at himself, if Kamau looks at himself, and every one of us here, if you really, really look at yourself, there's that thing that you are that is queer out there in the world because people don't understand you. Because then people have this thing that they, there's this mold that they would want you to fit in. But you don't need to fit in. You just need to be true to yourself because you're manifesting magnificence of what the source or this creative force or this creative entity is. And so if we would only tune into that, if we would only focus on that, if we'd only walk in such a high level of consciousness of that 
and appreciating mm. that. And then when you come into every place, as we are saying, when you walk into this place, then that which you are, you ooze it into that environment would be a symphony of just authenticity, uh, authenticity and goodness and just, you know, this positivity when it comes to the vibes that you are and that I am and that we are. And would make this world a better place and would make the areas of our influence wherever we are, whether it's in your family, whether it's in the world, in the office, wherever, however, would use it, would dispense that everywhere. And then now influence changes, impact changes, transformation occurs, because then you're standing at this higher place of elevation and people get drawn to you not because of the queer, not, not because of the negativity, but because of that which you are. That is what draws people to ourselves because then we become magnetic and that's the charismatic. And that's why you will find people even in cults doing the kind of things that they do because now they've understood the special gifting or the special mm -hmm. abilities that they have. But you know, all those things we all can have but if we, unless we now draw into ourselves and really take that moment to lock into ourselves and unlock those things and look at it from a positive standpoint and encourage ourselves to see ourselves from the eyes of the divine intelligence, then we will realize that we are peculiar beings. Then we will realize that we are special entities that are gifted so beautifully so that we can add music in the symphony of life. So for me, I mean, the symphony of life. Of life. So for me, when you talk about the, synchro uh, the synchrony of life, I appreciate so totally. I was telling Salim, uh, and uh, we are in another group with Sonia. Is Sonia here or oh, she's left? And in that group, we were like, we were like, um, we were sharing. And just one thing triggered me, this particular friend of ours, just this one thing triggered me into the path I am on today. She said something mm. and this thing triggered me. It's like, you know the way some things have been locked up in your inner being? And then it's like somebody comes and pricks you and then that which is in you gets released. And as this thing is released, then I started asking my questions and every other time. So the more you walk in a path, the more you realize, you know, the, deeper, the, the deeper you go, the you know, it just opens up, opens up. And then now I come to Salim. And when I'm talking to Salim, then Salim tells me, I've been looking and I've been wondering how it is that I'm going to bring this to you. Because Salim, mm -hmm. in his mind, is looking at me and he has this thought of who I am and what I am and where I am. And little mm -hmm. does Salim know or... Yeah he lacks that deeper knowledge of where it is that I am. And then what happens is that he's wondering and I'm wondering how am I going to be able to access because I was looking for some of the things that Salim shares with me. I have looked, I have looked. And then I tell Salim and then the first thing he does is he, he pours so much info and he says, I said, this is, I even, I even told him, you know, you need to make my journey easier. You have been here, so I need you to help me, right? Help me to get to that place where I can understand. Tell me where to start. You see, that's what I said. Then he does, it does answer upper one, do this one first, second, third, fourth, you know, because he was like, you know, you, you're very, uh, you know, me, I'm like organized. I'm, I like step by step by step. I said, yes, help me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So you see now, the, the thing is that in each and every one of us, there's that which somebody else is looking for. But when we do not walk in the fullness of who we are, when we come to somebody else, we will not see them in their beauty because we don't have beauty in us. We don't appreciate the beauty in us. We can't appreciate the beauty in somebody else. But the minute you're whole, the minute, the minute you're balanced, it is easy for you to draw out that in somebody else because you are in your fullness or, and in the element of what it is that you are and you have no problem with anybody else being that which they are. 
And I think that's the beauty of life for me. And I'll stop because now we can move on to some other stuff. Okay, okay. I, I, okay, let me talk. I, I, I just wanted to, you know, many people do not understand eh, when we are told, we are told to be our true self, true selves. And uh, I just wanted to clarify eh, so that people will understand. To be your true self, who is your true self? Your true self is that self that is not defined by your class, by your society, by your community, by your tribe, by your race, by the class or by the job you are doing, by the car you are driving, by the house you are living in. Your true self is never defined by anything which we can see in physicality. That is your true self. When you are your true self, you want, when you you, you you stay in that box of your true selfness, you will never judge any situation, anything outside, anybody, because you are, your self is, your true self is never identified by or defined by anything. So you, you are like in the neutral, it's that neutral state, which we say is the state of godliness. That state where the darkness meets the light, where the hot water stops to be hot and becomes cold, where the anger ceases to be anger to become happiness. Yeah, continue, Gikonyo. Ah, uh, you summarized it. <laughs> brother Kamau, is ready. Is brother Kamau ready? Yes, I am. Um, yes. I'm just listening to the interesting Kunshila. conversation. Yeah, it was wonderful. Um, is uh yes very much empowering and a uh, great message um and uh, wisdom like always and sheila always coming through with um uh some great information some great advice um some gems all the time she never lacks <laughs> Yeah, we've come thank you. through. So I give thanks. She's yes, my big yes, sister. Indeed. She's my she's my big sister. Yes, yes, she is our to us. She's everything to us. She's our mama, our sister. You know everything. Um, I'm waiting. Wait, I pass. You. Wait, wait, I pass around the offering basket. Black tax. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, brother Kamau. Now the the floor is you. As you know, to now, eh, what mm -hmm. we we started the, this program. Eh, now mm -hmm. uh, we give people everyone. You know, everyone has got something for everybody else, and we want everybody to open up and share what they have. That's why we now choose people to speak. Every Friday, somebody else, somebody else, at least we get every piece from everyone and we, as we grow together. So the floor is yours today, Mr. Kamau. And uh, oh. share with us about what you do, what you can uh, teach us today. We are here in full. Nice, nice, nice. Thank you so much, Brother Salim. Uh, again, I want to welcome everybody. And I want to thank you all for being here, being called creators of this moment, um, uh, this discussion, so we can um, uh, grow um, uh, together. And again, this is a discussion, um, just being the lead, but um, I would like to encourage people to <clears throat> 
ask as many questions as possible, um, contribute as much as possible. Um, don't feel that whatever information you have is might be wrong or it, it might not be valid or the question might not be good enough. Um, don't feel any type of way, just be free, be yourself. Um, and bring forth anything that you may have. Again, whatever we are going to share today, use what you can, uh, what doesn't resonate with you, you can let it be. Uh, and we do hope that uh, we can all benefit from something out of the discussion. Uh, again, uh, for those who don't know me or for introduction purposes, my name is Kamau. Uh, I'm a health coach, if you may, or I assist people with uh, their health journeys or information uh, pertaining to health and wellness. I uh, do a lot of sharing on Facebook. I go by the name uh, Kamaura on Facebook. Uh, and again, uh, the purpose is to empower people or to help people uh, uh, equip themselves uh, with the right information or or with the uh, the truths that I myself have come to realize uh, that is beneficial or is the truth uh, when it comes to health uh, and kind of uh, uh, busting some of the myths that um has been uh taught to us uh, or some of the misinformation that has been shared about health again health is is one of those um topics that is uh, as old as creation uh for as long as anybody lives they are going to deal with their health uh, they are going to deal with um, food. And again, the idea here or the way that I teach or the way that I approach health is in a holistic approach, in a way that uh, we try to uh, follow the laws of nature, uh, one of them being uh, the cause and effect uh, and, and by doing so, we look at things from a holistic point of view. Uh, and the understanding is now uh, when it comes to health or healing, uh, we have to look uh, at things the same way. Uh, again, today, uh, we are going to attempt uh, to uh, provide information on, on, on three aspects of our life, or I would like us to divide it into three parts. Uh, and the parts are, <clears throat> we're gonna look at the physical, which is the body, right? The health of the body. Then we're gonna go into the mental health, which is the health of the mind. And then we're gonna look at the spiritual health uh again which is the what does they mean and what is a, a spiritual health uh we're going to try to discuss or define that or, and even um give advice on what people can do to enhance uh, those areas or to grow in those areas um again starting with with the physical or the body uh when we are dealing with with health uh we are dealing with either good health or bad health or or great health and poor health so we are looking at it from those two dimensions uh and we want to understand what does it mean to be in good health versus what does it mean to be in poor health Right. And again, uh, in the same conversation, uh, when somebody is uh, not in good health, 
uh, we usually say that they are diseased or they are now well. And we want to understand what does that also mean. Uh, again, uh, when we're just speaking about uh, a health or a holistic health, uh, or somebody who is in, in, in good health, uh, we mean that they are balanced out, that uh, their systems are working according to uh, how they're supposed to work. Uh, there's a balance or there's homeostasis of everything working in harmony uh, or working together. Uh, when we're looking at the body or when we are talking about the body, it is made up of different systems or different parts that work together. And all these things work in harmony together to provide the whole body or the holistic body uh, with optimum health so it can survive uh, while living in this uh, universe. Again, what we have found out when we say that there is a diseased, what is happening is there is some parts of the body uh, or a particular part or a particular system that is out of balance. This is what a disease is. Uh, and when they happen, if one part is out of balance, is usually the other parts are overworking to maintain the balance because obviously one area is lacking. Uh, if you have a system, or if you if you ever worked in a system, or if you ever ran a system, you understand that they have different parts and they all work together to make sure that their system is, is working efficiently. Now, if you have an area that you have some lack uh, or some deficiency, is going to affect the rest of the systems, whether you are doing production or whatever you're doing, it is going to affect your goals, the outcome that you are looking into getting, uh, they are going to be affected by the part that is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, this is the same case when it comes to a human body. Again, uh, a human body is made up of different systems uh, that works together to create uh, a healthy human body. Now, again, most of these systems, each one have its own function. Uh, and they do that uh, to maintain, again, uh, good health. Now, when, when we are talking about these systems, they need uh, what they need to be able to perform their jobs. They need fuel. They need different things that needs to be at the level they needs to be in order for them to keep performing their job. Again, what happens is when there is either a lack of one of those things that their system needs or an extra or too much of what a usual or the level that a usual needs is an overflow, right? Or there's a lack. Uh, it causes uh, either the system to misfire or for it not to work properly. And when that happens, that's when you start again, it's either affecting other systems and then you start getting symptoms and these symptoms are what that are termed as diseases. So uh, for example, uh, something like the blood. Uh, if you have any issues with the blood or let's say for instance, you are low in iron 
which is a mineral that the blood uses to be able to function or to be able to do its job, which is to transport oxygen throughout the body, it means that you have a disease they call anemia, right? The same thing happens with, let's say, if you have an issue uh, with your glands. When you have an issue with your glands, uh, you are going to have a problem, let's say the female, they are going to have a problem with their reproductive systems, uh, which going to affect their hormones. And in doing so, the symptoms that will come out of this is either they are having heavy menstrual periods, or they are having irregular menstrual periods, uh, and those are the symptoms that are showing that there is a problem somewhere that needs to be addressed, uh, and so forth and so on. Uh, again, when we break down the human body, we find that uh, the lowest part that we can go to is, 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 is the part that is able to reproduce and because again, everything in nature, everything in creation is a continuous process that continuously supports each other uh, for the bigger good, right? And most of the time you find that they are going to be uh, a multiplication, a reproduction going on, uh, or a cycle rather, right? A cycle of life. Uh, and the lowest unit that we find in a human body is called a cell. Now a cell has other smaller parts that makes up the cell, but they are not able to reproduce themselves in so to become uh, like a living thing. So the, the lowest that we go is a cell or we are going to go today is, is a cell so we can understand how the human body works. Uh, the cell is almost like the full organism, right? The full human body. The cell have its own life cycle, right? They have the cycle where it feeds, it goes to the bathroom and it dies, right? So every second, you got thousands of cells that dies out of your body. Uh, and again, th these cells have to be fed or they eat, they use the bathroom and they die. And again, they reproduce, they reproduce. The cells are what makes the organs uh, and the limbs right, that we have in our body. Uh, so that's the lowest part that, and or that's how it's kind of joined together from the cells, then you have the organs or the cells make the organs and the limbs, and then the limbs and, and the organs makes the body. Uh, and again, uh, when we look at the human body, again, uh, with the law of cause and effect, we see that, uh, Again, you have to feed the human body some type of energy in order for it to be electrical or to be to keep moving because a human body is electrical and you have to keep moving it just like your vehicle where you have to put gasoline in it and they have different parts in it they actually you know works together to make sure that the vehicle moves or gets you from point a to point b now if you don't give it any fuel uh, the vehicle is not gonna move so that's what really you have to give it some type of energy for it to move um, now with the human body again the energy is food or part of the energy is food uh, the other part of the energy is water, and you also have sunlight, which plays a uh, key role um, in the production of this energy that the body needs or this balance that the body needs 
uh, to be able to function properly. Now, when we look at the human body again, what we realize is that uh, most of the issues that um, it en encounters or most of the issues that causes us to be off balance stems from the nutrition or it stems from the energy that is is being uh, given to the body again what i mean by that is uh like like i said you have things all the way down to cells that requires energy for the cells to function or for it to keep doing for them to keep doing their job they need energy and they where they get the energy from is from the food that we consume uh, that is broken down uh, into some source of energy uh, for the cells to use. Now you can imagine, you cannot see cells with your naked eyes. You have to use a microscope to be able to see cells. So you can imagine the type of food or the, the, uh, the form of food that it consumes, it has to be broken uh, to a level or to units that are so light for it to be able to assimilate or for it to be in an energy level. And again, you have different organs in the body that works to make sure that this happens. Now, again, when we go back to the physical form or, 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 or the more dense form of this food, uh, we find that uh, the foods that we consume, again, are going to affect us from uh, the physical organs all the way to the cells. Because again, that's the only thing that we are providing the body with is the food. The energy comes from the food. So in, in understanding that, we understand that anything, and we have proven this, that anything or any out of balance, and remember anything that is out of balance is called a disease or is actually any symptoms of out of balance are called diseases. So in understanding that, we know again through the raw law of, of nature, of course, in effect is the only thing that can put the body out of balance or have a disease is what you consume. And again, this is something that has been proven. There's nothing else that comes out of outside of the body to cause it to be diseased or come out of nowhere else. It's strictly the food that we consume uh, that either going to cause problems or to maintain homeostasis, which is again the balance of everything in the body. Uh, so when we look at the foods, we look at the foods that uh, could cause or why some of the foods uh, could cause problems. Uh, and we find again that um, some of these foods uh, that we consume are not compatible uh, with our bodies. Again, there's different ways we can look at that. But before we get into that, let's first understand what we mainly get from food or why do we consume food. Again, like I said, part of it is to give the cells the energy that the cells need to keep growing, to keep creating the organs and the limbs that the body needs to survive. Uh, the other part, which is also a main part, is uh, minerals. We find that inside the body, you have minerals. Again, minerals, if you look in, in, in the universe, you find that uh, minerals is the lowest form uh, of, of um, things that the body can use. 
you got lesser units or if you break down the minerals they go to lesser units however when you do the the body this is the the universe or nature have a law they have laws in it that the arrangement or the cosmic arrangement of it dictates uh what can be used when and how it can be used uh when we're looking at the minerals uh we find that that's the lowest uh that we can go uh to be able to use uh as pertaining to again the energy source from from the from the earth or the energy source from the universe uh for it to benefit the body so we use the minerals uh again these minerals are found in the soil right and these minerals are also found in water these minerals are also found inside our body and by consuming the foods what we find that happens is these minerals assimilates with the minerals uh, inside our body uh, so again in some cases you have some minerals that we use quite often that you know needs to be replenished quite often right so we need that uh, and again these minerals are all found in in the soil they're also found in the water uh, we are talking about things like iron magnesium copper uh, we are talking about things like sodium uh, we are talking about things like calcium and again if you look at different systems different parts of the body you find that you know each has is particular type of mineral that is abundant in this area you also have trace minerals now, what i mean by that is even in these um parts you'll find the main minerals and then you have the trace minerals because again one thing that we have found is nature works as a whole it doesn't work as a separation you cannot separate uh nature it have to work as a whole it have to be holistic uh so again you have for instance the main minerals for uh the brain or the head you find is copper and carbon uh, and definitely you have a whole bunch of other trace minerals like zinc uh, and things of their nature uh, when you go to the bones you find that the main mineral again is calcium again you have other trace minerals but the main one that makes the bones uh, the teeth is calcium uh, when you go to the blood you find is iron the main mineral is iron but you also have other trace minerals right when you go to the reproductive systems uh, you find zinc uh, things of their nature and the other trace minerals when you go to the skin uh, you have carbon silica and those type of minerals uh, and the other trace minerals that you find in those um, different systems now again these minerals again needs to be replenished quite often again this is the other purpose of the food so now we have two purposes of why we eat food uh, we have one is to provide energy for the cells for them to be able to reproduce, for them to keep us growing or to keep us alive as pertaining to the organs. Remember again, everything is a cycle. Everything dies and, and it grows afresh. It goes a cycle. The same way as a human beings, we get to a point that we die and you know, others are born. Uh, the same thing, even with a human body, you have, you shed your skin, you shed your hair uh, and other organs also. You have the, the cells dying and others being able to be reproduced. Uh, again, those are the two main reasons why we consume food. Okay. Um, now, 
uh, when we look at the food that we consume, again, we, we determine or we uh, earlier discuss as to um, mainly the problems comes in where there's an imbalance of a system uh, or where there's uh, something is now functioning properly. And again, we have determined that there almost 100% is caused by the foods that we consume, right? Uh, we got a few factors, just a very few factors, even less than 1%, which again, uh, we can name them as environmental. They could cause this imbalance. But 99%, it is going or is gonna come from the things that we ingest or the things that we put on our bodies. Uh, so we look at those things or we look at the foods to determine or to figure out why are these foods or why or what foods could cause issues in the body. Uh, what we have discovered is uh, humans uh, in their creative nature uh, after again, I don't know when we was or when we came to this earth, after some time, they decided to start experimenting with the foods that were already here. So, you know, the, the, the earliest one that I can think of or that I know of is Egypt, where they started modifying a lot of the foods. They started uh, creating things that were not there. So what they would do is hybridize some of these foods. And they did this because they wanted to create an environment, for instance, them being uh, on a desert, they wanted to create food that could grow in the area there was and for them to get bigger yields. Uh, and in doing so, they started separating the oneness of the plant and, and even the animals uh, by hybridizing, by mixing them up with either uh, different type 